Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. So today we have some very exciting news. Looks like Nvidia is really going to be gunning hard this GPU generation by moving up the launch of the RTX 40 series into July. That's really, really crazy and we have some more information about the flagship RTX 4090 coming out. So we're going to be talking about that here today and then we're also going to take a look at all the information we already know about the upcoming Ada Lovelace GPUs from Nvidia and see if all of these things seem to make sense. And it looks like Compite is not so sure if RDNA 3 is going to be as competitive as we thought. So we'll talk about all that here today in this video. Before we get into it, if you like videos like this, please smash that like button, please subscribe, please share with friends. That's really the only way to grow YouTube channels anymore, and I really appreciate all your help and support. Alrighty guys, kicking things off with the big news. NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 with 16 128 CUDA cores and 450 watt TDP is and is allegedly twice as fast as the RTX 3090. So there's actually a lot to unpack there. So let's go ahead and see exactly where this is coming from. So this comes from Notorious Leaker Compite7Kimmy, and this is what the tweet says. Okay, let's do a new summary. RTX 4090 AD102-300, 16128 FP32, 21 gigabit and 24 gigabytes GDDR6, 450 watts, and approximately twice as fast as the RTX 3090. Now, let's sit here and think about this. First off, this is not the full die. We already have the leaks from NVIDIA, so this is definitely cut down, which makes sense. The 4090 is likely not going to be the real flagship. It will be the more mainstream flagship. This one will probably make more sense, so cutting it down, once again, makes a lot of sense. 450 watts. This is a lot more palatable. Just jumping on over here to tech power up for the database, the RTX 3090 Ti is already coming in at 450 watts. So this isn't outside the realm of anything we're used to. So yeah, they could just reuse the coolers, assuming everything lines up, and that would actually save a lot of R&D money. So all of those rumors of higher watt GPUs may still be true, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. All right, continuing on with the tweet, I am disappointed with RDNA 3, and that is all. So obviously we have no information here, but I'll go through what I think this might mean. Now granted, it's just my opinion, but the fact that we are hearing people slam the brakes on the hype train for RDNA 3 almost on a daily basis, I think that there's a lot that we can glean from that. And then video cards reached out to get clarification. By the way, you said early Q3, you meant early Q3 or early as in Q3 and Compound said mid-July, okay? So we're looking at a much earlier release than we were originally anticipating. Now this is the speculation on the part of the editor over here at Video Cards. He's saying the 40 series will likely include the 4090, 4080, and 4070 SKUs at launch. And I've come around on this and I believe that this is likely correct. And we'll go ahead and talk more about that when we go into the specs. So what do we know about Lovelace, the RTX 40 series? Well, this came out a long time ago. This was from the hacked leak that we got information about all of the CUs from the AD102 all the way down to the AD107. So we know that AD102 is gonna have 144 SMs total, 103 is gonna be 84, 60 on the 104, and then 36 over here. So what we're likely gonna see is one AD102 chip, which would be the RTX 4090, then the 30, or the 4080 rather, will be coming in as an AD103, and then an AD104 chip as the RTX 4070. Now, we can't gain all the knowledge. I can't tell you exactly how these are going to perform, but we can see that the 104 chip is getting a major bump on the SM count. That's likely due to the fact that they want this to compete with something like the 3080 Ti, somewhere around that level, so this way they can give you the type of performance that you know we expect from a 70 class GPU. It's typically close to the flagship from the previous gen. 8103 at 84 SMs matches the previous gen AD, or GA102, and that means that with clock speed increases, IPC, and things like that, we should see anywhere from 20 to 30% more performance on this chip 
at least maxed out versus maxed out. So that would make the 80 class very appealing. The 20 to 30% over the previous gen flagship is great. And then you have the AD-102, which is massive, an absolute monster. And we can clearly see that this is going to be broken up into several chips. And the fact that the 90 is cut down, going back to the previous article, I did leave this part out on purpose because uh, the new number that we have, the 16128, that means the 4090 is actually only 126 SMs. So that means there's a lot of room there for SKUs above this. So before I go over how I think this is all going to shake out, I'm actually really excited. I got the bug, guys. The bug has bit me. I am very interested to see how this all pans out. Getting things early is always nice. You don't have to wait as long. And the fact that this is a pretty big surprise, most people didn't expect this, that's great. And it does make a lot of sense. This tells me a lot of things about what's going on. First off, NVIDIA is clearly worried about what RDNA 3 has. So they want to go ahead and get their products out first. So this way they can gain all those sales, take people out of the market and yeah, look really good by launching, let's say three or four months earlier. Now, granted, AMD could probably move their stuff up a little bit too, but who knows? I bet NVIDIA knows actually. Uh, according to Jensen, he knows exactly what AMD has, when they're gonna launch and all of that and vice versa. So none of this should really be a surprise. Ultimately, the only thing the companies don't know from each other, according to Jensen himself, is basically pricing, as that's determined at the very, very end. Now, my takeaway from this is it's very clear that the AD102 is going to make up definitely a few SKUs. Now, seeing that the 4090 is only going to be 450 watts, and I hate using only and 450 watts in the same sentence, but considering we're hearing 600 watts and 8, 900 watts, this is actually a good thing. The fact that we know about how this is gonna perform, how the coolers are gonna look, basically just go look at any 3090 Ti and poof, there you go. That's basically what it'll be. But the fact that it's only gonna be 126 SMs also makes a lot of sense. This is going to be the almost good enough chip that most people are gonna buy it. This means a video are gonna price this one probably somewhat reasonable. I would assume probably at that 1999 mark, just like the 3090 Ti, except it's going to be much faster than the next chip under it. So I think a lot of people are going to buy this one. Now with that extra room there, because what was it? Uh, 126 SM, so that's what, 18 more? That's gonna be a bit, that's going to be enough for them to go ahead and make one to two more SKUs. So I think we are going to see a 600 watt chip that should be either the 4090 Ti or Titan, depending on how competitive AMD is. I think NVIDIA is going to want to wait and see what the landscape looks like before they announce those. Uh, basically, it just gives them some room for pricing and, and performance and all that sort of stuff. I think they want to see the market reaction on Navi 31 before bringing those out. And then the nine, eight, 900 watt thing that we were thinking about or hearing about, that was likely NVIDIA just trying out to see what they could push to the absolute limits. And if a product like that were to come out, even back then, we were all speculating that would be a Titan product with 48 gigs of RAM with some sort of crazy custom cooling. And sure, why not? They have enough room there that they could absolutely do that. Obviously, that would not be a product for us, the gamers out there. The 4090 is really going to be the top end chip that I think most people are going to want. Eventually, they will come out with a 4080 Ti, which will also be based on that AD102 chip. So that would actually probably be more attractive and somewhere is around that $1,500-ish price point, I believe. So that's kind of the shakeout on the high end where I think things are going to land. We're going to have the 4080 Ti eventually come out. So at launch, we will have the 4090, which uh, slots right in, as I said. And realistically, that two times performance thing, that is likely going to be the marketing material. It's going to be like, yeah, it's twice as fast. It's going to be up to twice as fast. That's what the marketing is going to be. Real world, I would expect probably 70 to 80%, which is still huge. That is a massive upgrade. That's like going from a 980 Ti to a 1080 Ti. That was a monster upgrade as well. Now, the chip above that might get to the full 2x across the board, but that's going to be the 600, 800 watt monster that honestly most people aren't going to care about. But still, I think that that's going to be very appealing for high-end gamers, especially anybody that was even considering a 3090 or 3090 Ti. 
just hold off, guys. NVIDIA, they know they're not selling 3090 Ti's. That's why moving this launch up, it's just not going to hurt their sales. So for them, it makes sense to do this. Then if we look at something like the 4080, where's that going to land? With similar SM counts to the high-end stuff this generation, you're going to get your IPC and clock speed increases, and that's about it you should still get 20 to 30% more performance, which would be really good. And that should leave like a 30 to 40% gap between that and the 90 class. And that chip should probably come in around the $1,000 price point, maybe 1,200. Hopefully they don't do the FE edition price and then the MSRP price, because we all know that whatever the FE price, that's what they uh, start at. But if they do, like I said, that's probably the price point that they'll kick it off at, probably 2,000-ish on the 4090, maybe 2,200. Uh, but there's gonna be a big enough gap there that a lot of people are gonna want that. It's obviously gonna have 16 gigs of RAM being 256 bit. And the main reason why I, I'm fairly confident prices are going up is because the AD103 die is really a 104 die. It's 256 bit bus and all this and that. They're just changing the name to a higher tier so they could charge more money. Every time they change the name, it's just a marketing ploy. So realistically, the 4080 is going back to essentially a 104 die with a 256-bit bus, which is fine. The performance is there to justify it. As long as the price makes sense to you, then whatever. Uh, and then for the 4070, that is likely going to match the flagship GPUs of this generation. In terms of pricing, this one's gonna be kind of tough, but if I had to guess, I'd say around the $600 mark, would make sense between six and $700. Now this is also a price bump. However, if we look at something like the 3070 Ti, that's about where that's at. Even though that is a little bit faster than the last gen's flagship, this chip may also be slightly faster. Maybe it wins by five or 10%. So they can just be like, well, it's faster than a 3090 or something. Maybe it'll match like the 3090 Ti. If it does that, I mean, not a lot of people are gonna complain about getting a $2,000 graphics card for six, $700. So yeah, I think that that would actually do very well for them. And that's gonna cover the mainstream high-end gamer all the way to the extreme enthusiast. Now, the last thing I wanna touch on is Compite not being impressed with RDNA 3. And I wanna go over my thoughts on this because there's it's multifaceted. There's a lot of things that are probably going on here. Number one, we expect RDNA 3 to be MCM, which is great. That means that they can basically get more transistor density onto the package than ever before by breaking them up and keeping costs relatively uh, in check. Now, trouble with this is chiplets equals latency and latency equals slow. So there could be issues making this all work together, making it fast enough to compete against monolithic dyes uh, or something to that effect, maybe drivers. There's a myriad of things that could be going on. Perhaps AMD cheaped out, did not go big enough, which they traditionally don't. Uh, when they try to go for a flagship chip, they usually just sell themselves a little bit short. You can see it with uh, RDNA 2. I think that they could have added another 20 or 40 uh, CUs on that chip and been more competitive and possibly won the whole generation. They chose not to do this, and here we are. So this is that's right in AMD's wheelhouse, just not going big enough because they don't want to risk it. And them being so risk averse is actually going to hurt them in this market if they're trying to go for that elite tier. So yeah, those are really the two big things that come to mind for me. The performance might not be as good as we we're expecting due to latency issues. Think of like Zen 1 and Zen 2. Those had some serious latency issues. Zen 3 fixed a lot of it, and then Zen 3D is really the first Zen chip to completely eliminate that as a problem. So it, there's gonna be some growing pains with MCM. Now, granted, AMD might just go way cheaper and offer like close to the same performance as Nvidia, or possibly they're still faster. It's hard to say. But I would really pump the brakes on AMD if I were you guys. Wait until it comes out. There's so much new technology here. The fact that we're all expecting them to hit a home run at every single level on this, while that would be nice, it, it's a little unrealistic. More than likely, they're going to swing and miss on one thing or another, and that is going to hurt them. Obviously, marketing is going to be one of them. But, you know, with that one aside, I'm talking about architecturally. I'm sure there's going to be something that will need to be fixed in RDNA 4. And basically, just look at how Zen went. And they keep doing better and better and better. It's just that first jump in takes a little bit. NVIDIA, however, sticking with basically the same process that they've been using for a while now. 
monolithic, just keep it going, throw some more cash in there. We all know cash makes things better. I think they might be more competitive than we were thinking beforehand. Regardless, they're probably going to be first. And if you're not first, you're last. Unfortunately, that's how it goes. Once the people that want to buy a graphics card, especially at the high end, get their hands on one of these 40 series, even if AMD wins, they're not going to sell their NVIDIA card to buy an AMD card. Not most of them anyway, especially since NVIDIA just holds more value. Uh, I was having a discussion with the guys on Discord the other day, which by the way, if you want to help support the channel, you can go ahead and do that by clicking the member button down below or becoming a patron, gets you on Discord and we can chat, or you can become a member over at the Technomics Podcast channel. You can do that as well, support both Paul and I. Either way, gets you in there. But anyways, we were talking about basically the pricing and NVIDIA cards are worth basically a tier up on AMD. For example, the 3060 is worth about what the 6700 XT is. And this was blowing the minds of the guys that I was talking to. It's like, yes, I guarantee you if I found somebody who wanted an NVIDIA card but had to buy an AMD card because it was the only thing that they could get and I offered them my 3060, I guarantee you I can get a 6700 XT for it, maybe even a 6080 or a 6800 rather. And they, their minds just blew. I'm like, it's not about the performance. The card is just more valuable because of its feature set and its desirability. P more people want this than that. And that's just plain and simple. So by NVIDIA coming out early and gobbling up all those sales, if they have two or three months of production, we know how many millions of units they can produce each month. It's gonna take a lot of people out of the market. So I think that this is actually a very smart move for NVIDIA, they know GPUs are slowing down of the current series, everybody's waiting for the next gen. So to keep that share price up, bringing this out early will definitely give them a nice influx on sales. So this way the crypto boom going down, offset by the new GPUs releasing. Once again, it all lines up for me. So I think that most of this is true. It all seems to make sense. And with how close we are to this release or announcement, whichever way they go, I think that this is how it's gonna go. But now I'm interested in your thoughts. Do you think that NVIDIA is going to release early? Do you think that the pricing that I put out there makes sense? Do you think that they're gonna to try to charge the moon? Honestly, I think for something that cut down, $2,000 is the moon, but that's my opinion. I wanna hear your thoughts on this one down there. And like I said, if you wanna help support the channel, help me get some more stuff on hands, do all that testing and chat with me directly, consider becoming a member. Click a little button down there or becoming a Patreon member in the description down below. So alrighty guys, that's really all I have for you here today. I'm super excited to see what happens. I wanna see these two companies beat the hell out of each other. I want us to get better value, more performance, less money, you know, all that jazz. So alrighty guys, that's all I have for you here today. And we'll catch you guys in the next video.